In 1959, whispers in the corridors of power in the United States pointed to a scheme so outlandish it might well have been scripted in the science fiction annals of the time. Amidst the throbbing heart of the Cold War, the U.S. military contemplated a demonstration of power so astronomical, literally, that it would have illuminated the moon with a nuclear explosion visible from Earth. This was not extraterrestrial fear, but terrestrial strategy, encapsulated in a top-secret plan codenamed Project A119. Beyond the sheer audacity of such an idea, this plan highlighted the extremes of paranoia and competition between the superpowers, setting the stage for a Cold War episode that seems almost too bizarre to be true. The roots of Project A119 were not mere whims of fancy, but stemmed from a deeper strategic desire to regain dominance in the space race, a contest that at the time seemed overwhelmingly in favor of the Soviet Union. By the late 1950s, the Soviets had stunned the world with their technological prowess, first by launching Sputnik, the first artificial satellite, and then by sending the first living creature, Laika the dog, into orbit. The U.S. response, marred by the failed launch of the Vanguard TV-3 satellite, was to reinstate its technological superiority in a manner as public and dramatic as possible. In this context, the proposal to detonate a nuclear bomb on the lunar surface was seen not just as a spectacle, but as an unequivocal display of might. The planning involved high-profile scientists, including Leonard Reifel, who later became a physicist at NASA, and a young Carl Sagan, who was responsible for predicting the behavior of the lunar dust and gas blown up by the explosion. This audacious plan sought not just to awe the global audience, but to demonstrate that the U.S. could project its military power beyond our earthly confines into celestial territory. However bizarre it seems today, lunar-based nuclear testing was seen as a logical extension of terrestrial nuclear testing. Ironically, the bombastic nature of the plot mirrored the fears and anxieties of a world gripped by nuclear dread. The backdrop of this frenzy was a political canvas painted with the brushstrokes of McCarthyism, existential dread of nuclear apocalypse, and the burgeoning civil rights movement challenging societal norms domestically. Driving Project A-119 were not only military generals and defense strategists, but some of the brightest minds in science. Physicist Leonard Reifel led the project, operating from Illinois' Armor Research Foundation with the backing of the U.S. Air Force. While the core idea might seem straightforward, explode a bomb on the moon, the implications and logistics were anything but. The project required meticulous planning, from the trajectory of the missile, ensuring it would crash and not orbit, to calculating the visual impact of the nuclear explosion in earthly skies. The technological challenges were daunting. Engineers and scientists wrestled with questions about the missile's design that could travel the 384,400 kilometers distance to the moon and then initiate a nuclear explosion upon impact. The environmental impact, like the possible contamination of the lunar surface and implications for future manned moon missions, also played into the increasingly complex equations political implications were equally substantial. The detonation could have sent a message of unassailable power to the Soviets, potentially altering the dynamics of international diplomacy. Yet, it was fraught with risk. Would it trigger a nuclear response from the USSR? How would allies react to a nuclear test ban treaties violation? These were pressing questions that stirred vigorous debate among American politicians and strategists. Ironically, despite all the intricate planning and heated discussions, Project A-119 never came to fruition. It was shalipped under layers of secrecy, partly because of the realization that the scientific community and public might harshly judge a celestial nuclear test. Eventually, the project was shelved not with a bang, but a whisper lost in the annals of classified military documents, until its declassification in the late 1990s opened a Pandora's box of historical, ethical, and scientific inquisition. 
This retelling of one of the most audacious plans of the Cold War reveals more than just the lengths to which governments will go to assert dominance. It mirrors a period where scientific progress and military prowess were inextricably linked, often catalyzing each other in unforeseen ways, leaving a legacy that both enthralls and admonishes our present-day pursuit of power and knowledge.